Hello, and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I am available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. Now, in this episode, which I expect will probably be pretty quick, I'm going to explain integer literals in ARM assembly. Often in these videos, using Compiler Explorer, I show you code that's from 64-bit Intel, but I have personally been doing a fair bit of work with ARM lately, so I thought that I would demonstrate some of the things that you might be looking at. Now, ARM CPUs are quite popular today. It is in the Raspberry Pi, many other embedded computers, and in it's the architecture that powers our iPhones and Android devices as well. This is going to be, from an assembly standpoint, quite straightforward. But let's look here at this code that is 64-bit Intel, and I'm returning this value 257 from main. And this value 257 is being copied into the register EAX. This is where we expect to see the return value from main, and then we are returning from main. That's all we're doing here. And we can make this number, well, this is a 64-bit platform, but main is only returning a signed 32-bit integer. So, you know, if we wanted to, we could make this something like negative 2 billion. And if you're not aware, we can use our delimiters that were added in C++11. So we can do something like this, negative 2 billion. We can see this is accurately represented here. And we can continue to do something interesting here. In our Intel assembly here, we can directly represent any 32-bit value and just put it into the register. And that's not surprising. There's nothing confusing going on. Now, I'm going to switch over to GCC ARM. And I'm going to use the latest compiler that is available on Compiler Explorer, which is 7.2.1. And what we will have noticed is that we are no longer directly loading this register. Now, the return value from our main function here on ARM is R0. And ARM has just basically um, 16 registers, 32-bit ARM does, that we can directly access any of them. So register 0, this is where the return value goes. And it is doing a load of this value that is stored at a particular memory address, which is here, dot L3. Now let's take this back down here to 255. And now we can see on the arm that it is doing this copy of 255 into R0. That makes sense. We take it to 256. It is still copying 256 into R0. Now we take this to 257, and we see that it has moved it off into this other location in the binary again, and it is doing this indirect load of this value from this memory location here, the label is L3, into the register R0. If you have spent any time at all looking at ARM disassembly, you might be wondering why it is doing this. And I've spent just enough time looking at ARM architecture lately to, well, have a pretty good idea what it's doing. But first, we're going to move to Clang instead of GCC, because it takes a slightly different um, tactic for how it loads these values into registers. So I have over here a Clang trunk ARM build that I have made for my own use. And I am running my Compiler Explorer on my own local system. And I am doing this return from 256 from main, just as we were looking at before, and it's doing the exact same thing, return 256 into R0. Now, if I take this to 257, we can see a hint as to why GCC is doing this indirect load of this value from another location of memory. So here, we are moving the value 1 into R0. Here, we are doing a bitwise OR of the literal value 256, with the value that is currently in R0, and storing the result in R0. So we know that R0 started out as the value 1. And that looks something like this. I'm representing this as an 8-bit value for the moment. Actually, let's go ahead and make this a let's make this a 12-bit value. That's gonna seem a little strange at the moment, but 
maybe this will make sense. The question that we have and what we know is that if we go past 256, we start to see this weirdness. 255 is fine. 256. 257. What is the value 257? This is the result we are looking for. It is going to be this value. So this is the ninth bit set, which is the value 256. And the first bit set, which is the value 1, 256 plus 1, is 257. So this is fairly basic binary math here. Why did it do this? Let's go back and look at the documentation for how this kind of instruction is encoded in an ARM. We are looking at the official ARM reference manual here, and this is all of the different types of instruction formats that the CPU supports. And what we have here at the top is our data processing and transfer instructions. And this is our general kind of move or and not kind of instructions. And what we can see is that we have operand 2 here, which has got 12 bits dedicated to it. So the first thing that we need to understand, and we can see here in this chart, is that on ARM, regular ARM, not taking into account thumb, all instructions are exactly 32 bits. So by the time that we have set the condition codes, we have set the op code for what operation we want to actually perform, what register we want to store the result in, what register we want to get values from, we only have 12 bits left over for our literal value that's in our ARM instruction here. So what do we do with 12 bits? The 12 bits itself is encoded in a way that has 8 bits of literal value, which is why we can easily store 255 in there, and plus a rotate. So we can do a right rotate of those 8 bits by any even number of bits within a 32-bit word. So if we were to take the same program, and this time we're going to put it in our vim here so that we can actually compile it locally and look at the output. Okay, now we have compiled our object file and we have this test underscore literal dot o object file. So we're going to do an object dump of this with disassembly. And if we go up to our main here, we can actually take a look at this right here which is our encoded instruction for this 256 value. This one is not confusing. We're moving 1 into register 0, so we can see actually the value 1 here. Now, we also see this value 1. Now, if you recall, the bottom 8 bits of this instruction is the literal that's stored, but we need to get to the value 256 somehow, and this is... Uh, represented here as OX100, and that's what we expect. That's the bits that we were just looking at in our Compiler Explorer window. But we need to understand what this C is about. So if we go and look at the ARM addressing modes for a 32-bit immediate encoding, we can see here that the CPU expects to see this lower 8 bits of our immediate value like we thought, and then bits 11, 10, 9, and 8, so the next 4 bits, is the amount that we want to rotate by. And we can see here also that this rotate immediate is a right rotate by 2 times the number of the value that was specified here. Now let's get back to our output. This C here represents our 2 times right rotate. Now let's take that C and put that back into our notes that we were writing down in our Compiler Explorer window. So this value, this 256 right here, is encoded as taking 1 and rotating it right, not truly a shift right, because if we shift that right by any amount, it will fall off the edge, it'll just be 0. So we're doing a rotate right by C times 2. And C in hexadecimal is 12. 
So we are doing a rotate right by 24 bits. If we take one and rotate it right 24 times within a 32-bit value, what do we get? So if we take it and rotate it once in a 32-bit value, then we're going to get this, a value that looks like this. So that is one, and now we need to move it 23 more times, which will put the value right here. So if we take our one value and rotate it right 24 times, we will get a value that looks like this. And this seems like a complicated way of doing things, but it is the limitations of the ARM architecture. We can only rotate right and only by some multiple of two, as it says in the documentation, an even number. But this gives us the value that we ultimately need, which is this 256, to or with this value, which is our one, which was created here. And then ultimately we get this thing right here, which is our value 257. And this is how it is being returned from main. So it makes some sense that GCC takes this and moves it into another part of the binary and just copies that in. But Clang seems to have taken the standpoint here that this is more efficient. Honestly, I have no idea but I'm sure there was some reason that they did it this way. So there you go. If you ever find yourself looking at the assembly language output here from your ARM CPU and Compiler Explorer or in another tool, maybe you have a better understanding as to why it is doing this kind of thing to represent literal values. This episode definitely went longer than I expected it to. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something and be sure to give it a thumbs up.